Okay, we are at 21.9 Maxwell's predictions. Now, if we were to look at the slides from 24, 25, it would say Maxwell's equations. Well, Mr. Minchaka, why don't you just show us Maxwell's equations? Well, I'll show you why. Uh, these are Maxwell's equations. Uh, in the integral form is in the center column, and the differential form is in the uh, uh, the right hand column with a bunch of Dell operators. But th this is basically Gauss's law, Gauss's law for magnetism, Maxwell Faraday equation, and ampere, ampere circuital law with Maxwell's additions. Now let's let's share the uh, uh, share the PowerPoint, and this is what uh, basically what it says. Number one, uh, electric field lines originate on positive charges and terminate on negative charges. That's we learned all of this when we uh, started drawing field lines coming out, emanating out of positive charges and going into negative charges. In other words, it's saying it's saying it, it it's Gauss's law. In other words, the you could tell the size of the charge just by putting a box and counting the number of basically the lines coming out of it. Uh, so that's all it's saying. You can isolate charges. You can have, you have positive uh, electric field lines coming out of uh, positive charges and you have field lines going into negative charges. Now magnetic, number two, magnetic field lines always form closed loops. What this is saying is that you always have a north and a south. If you break a magnet in half, you get a new north-south and another north-south. You cannot keep breaking it to where you isolate a north. You cannot have a, a magnetic monopole. Uh, so magnetic field lines are always form closed loops. Uh, you, you go from the north to the south. They are always uh, complete loops. Uh, they don't ever emanate out from a, a north and not end up at a south because you always have a south adjoining it. Even on the earth, you, you have the magnetic field lines of the earth for as large as that is. Okay, number three is a varying magnetic field induces an EMF and, and, and so an electric field. But you did that with your coil of wire and a magnet. If the magnet is still, you don't have a varying magnetic field, you get no, uh, no current on the uh, galvanometer. If you slide the uh, if you slide the magnet into it, you'll see a deflection uh, on the galvanometer. If you pull it out, you'll see a deflection at the other side. Uh, we did that in lab. Uh, I think it was just last Thursday. I'm losing track of time. Um, and then number four, magnetic fields are generated by moving charges or currents. Uh, remember the right hand rule: if you have current in a wire, you have magnetic field formed around the uh, the wire and those are basic the fundamentally what Maxwell's equations Maxwell's predictions here what they say um, and this is a photo of uh, James Clerk Maxwell um, so he his his unifying electricity and magnetism with these equations was quite a quite a feat. Um, so uh, it, this is one of the greatest discoveries on par with Newton's disco discovery of the laws of motion. Um, so it had a profound influence on later scientific uh, developments. So um, it, it's, it's, hard to, it's hard to say how great an achievement this was for um, James Clerk Maxwell. Um, now, Hertz confirmed uh, Maxwell's predictions. Um, he set up a, after Maxwell died, uh, he set up a, a, a tank circuit to, to show that, that you could get a, an oscillating um, circuit with an LC circuit. And I'm going to do another. Uh, so you have here um, a, a uh, capacitor, and the potential energy stored in a capacitor is uh, the Q squared, the Q max squared over uh, 2C, 
or the, maybe you were used to seeing it as one half Q squared max over C. Uh, the uh, potential energy stored in the magnetic field of the inductor, uh, PEL, is equal to um, one half Li squared, uh, the inductor times the current squared. Uh, let's let's do a different share. Let's share. Um, our good old friend Walter Fent. Uh, I'm gonna reset this. Let's uh, actually let me uh, go to the beginning. Now I'm gonna do this in slow motion so that you can see what ha what what's happening. As you flip the switch, this capacitor is already fully charged. You can see it's connected to a battery, so it's fully charged. We're gonna flip it over to the uh, coil. That's not a resistor. That's a coil. That's an inductor, and you're gonna see the uh, the building magnetic field as the uh, charge on the capacitor collapses, as the charge on the, the capacitor collapses, the magnetic field builds up and then it, uh, then it collapses and charges the capacitor in the opposite direction. Uh, then it, it charges the uh, coil with the magnetic field in the opposite direction, it collapses and it changes the capacitor and it just keeps going back and forth. Now this is an ideal situation but every coil has a bit of resistance because it's made with wire and every capacitor even with the leads that that are connecting it it has a bit of resistance so you you this thing is not this could be a source of uh, uh, constant energy but there are losses so let's put a, a realistic a uh, loss in there. Let's just if we put in one one ohm and start it again. You'll see that you can't see much difference. Uh, look at the waveform. You don't see that it's diminishing. Now let's put let's reset it and make it uh, uh, five ohms, and you'll start to see. Oh, it's starting to go down. See, that's some real resistance. It dissipates some of that energy. It heats it. You can see the the current going through the resistor at top, it dissipates some of the energy. Now let's, let's reset it and let's make it a 10 ohm um, resistor. And let's start it. And now you can see that it's, it's really starting to decay. We can make it something like uh, 25, uh, 25 ohm. And now you can see it's really diminished. If we make it something like 50, it will barely get one, one um, cycle in. Uh, you can see how it, it dissipates very quickly. Let's uh, speed it up. And you see that it, it just goes a few cycles and then uh, too much energy is dissipated and you have a, uh, a fast dampening. Okay, let, that's enough of that. Let's go back to the... Uh, PowerPoint. Um, so that this is a tank circuit, and it does oscillate uh, back and forth. Forth. This was uh, Hertz verified some of Maxwell's predictions, and he also did it. Uh, he was also able to transmit um, a signal uh, across air uh, using the ideas of Maxwell. He uh, the Remember the resonant frequency is one over two pi square root of LC, and he has a uh, induction coil. There's a little gap here that serves as like a little capacitor. So the transmitter consists of two spherical electrodes connected to an induction coil, which provides short voltage surges to the sphere, setting up oscillations in the discharge. And so you basically you have a capacitor uh, between the the two spheres, and you have an induction coil. So you have a a little tank circuit. And here's the receiver. The receiver is a nearby loop of wire containing a second spark gap. And so he was able to transmit a signal, an oscillating signal, from one side to the other. Um, so uh, it, it, you can think of it, it, it I, we didn't do this, but if you were to strike a, a tuning fork and have another tuning fork of the same frequency, you get some. Uh, it, it, the, you would get some resonance, and it would uh, it would vibrate at the same 
at the same frequency as the original tuning fork. Um, so th this is uh, uh, Heinrich Hertz. And uh, one of the other things that he did is, is he um, figured out that the velocity, base, velocity is equal to frequency uh, times the wavelength. Uh, the, uh, he was able to, to estimate the speed of light at uh, three times 10 to the eight meters per second. Um, so, uh, uh, so he, Hertz's experiments provided the first evidence in support of Maxwell's theories. And the next section we'll do is uh, 2110, the production of electromagnetic waves by an antenna.